Hey, Hada, what's happening in Melee? The off season two is finally here. I have been talking about the off season two for months, just in terms of looking forward to it. And now it's here and we have no bracket. So we have notable entrance to go off of. I, the more I read about it on Liquipedia, the more I get confused on how the exact bracket works. But this is a charity event first and foremost, raising funds from November, which is uh, for, 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 for fellas, anti, uh, no, no, no. I want to get this right. I don't want to give the, the, the wrong angle prostate of... Cancer. It's prostate cancer. Yes. Mm -hmm. prostate so, cancer. so Hitch a Ride, Optics, running this. Big, big love from them. They're also doing Guitar Hero 3 bracket, mm -hmm. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 bracket. Mm -hmm. They're even doing a Smash 64 bracket. They'll do Smash 64 before they do Brawl. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, Hada. How's it going? How's, how, how, <laughs> how are you doing this week? Um, I'm doing pretty well. I've uh, <laughs> been playing a lot more volleyball. Been uh, inspired by the victory of Aaron Battery. And um, also what's really cool is... Um, I feel like that volleyball is becoming, you know, just beyond being a more, um, I guess, public facing sport. Uh, my family and my friends seem to be also getting into it as well. My brother is a sports photographer and he's uh, collaborating a lot with Olympiad quality volleyball players. And he's been shooting them at sand volleyball tournaments and he's been doing really, really cool stuff. So just surrounded by a lot of cool athletes and a lot of cool stuff going on. But I'm really excited to see uh, off season two start to pop off uh, some Colorado Melee players are in the gun to be in attendance uh, DSJ and Fizzwiggle are going to be teaming at the event for Melee singles there's a thousand dollar pop bonus for that so that's very very cool um, I'm expecting them to go pretty deep they're a very good team also uh, Fishbait and uh, Michael D. Kiefer which is another amazing team originating from Colorado uh, Fishbait's now an Oregon player but still has their deep roots in Colorado best peach to ever come from Colorado um and I believe uh, Fallen and Schwang are going. Fallen from uh, Famous and Friends 3 content and combo video content. Very, very fast, cool Falco. Um, and then there's uh, some. Their good friend Womp303 is going to be selling controllers there as well. So lots of cool stuff happening in the offseason. Uh, we also have some other cool things going on in the Melee community. And something that I'm really excited to talk about is um, the... Official, unofficial hall, Melee Hall of Fame that was produced by Toph and IBDW during his subathon. And we have a uh, pretty preliminary list. So I'm excited to go through that in a little while. But first, let's jump into offseason. Um, I know that there is a notable players list, a.k.a. like an invited players list. Um, and the only asterisk to that would be Axe getting replaced by none. So it looks like here the... The lock-ins for the, I guess, the notable players is going to be Amsa, Mango, Hungrybox, Wizrobe, Nun, S2J, Jmook, Zane, and Cody. Um, and I believe those are going to be your invited players, meaning that they believe they just get floated into the bracket. Um, and then there is a play-in stage, I believe, to fill out the top 16, if I remember correctly. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Jesse. I'm still trying to figure that out over here, but if we have Wizrobe in melee singles at all, you could just bank on Wizrobe getting in somehow to being able to play against the invited players. That's how that, that's how it must be. That's how it should be. I don't want to say that Wizrobe's on her home turf because I think Wizrobe actually moved back out of Texas, mm -hmm. but I don't know that for a fact. I think I remember hearing it. So. If if if, if Wizard could just get a good night's sleep and and then like I said be in melee singles in the first place because at SmashCon this or a couple months ago Wizard was not in the melee singles bracket was only concentrating on 64. Of course, 64 will not be anywhere near the level of hype and an entrance that it has for SmashCon because SmashCon is the Super Bowl of 64 brackets. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes out for, from South America and from Japan, and that is not the case for all season two. But it is still really cool. Five thousand dollar pop bonus for a 64 <laughs> tournament. This is this does not come along every day. Let's just put it that way. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of there for for top eight at the very least. Mm -hmm. But if Wizrobe is indeed entered into the melee side of things, mm -hmm. you could just kind of like bank on that. It'd be cool to see how Skurzo can do. I want to see Spark go far. Love to see Magi and Fiction. Salt, of course, who has had these moments of being 
the best Falcon of 2023. I'd say Esther J is the other Falcon that has put forward great results. And it's interesting. Nun was the person who replaced Axe. Axe got the Rona, will not be attending all season two. So among the eight invited players, Nun took Axe's place. Now, I'm just curious on your opinion about this because they're, they're, salt is right there. And I'm not trying to do this whole what have you done for me lately thing. I'm just trying to be <laughs> think through the mind of a TO mm -hmm. in terms of you're going you're gonna to ruffle feathers of somebody, make somebody upset by inviting X player over Y player. So for you, mm -hmm. Pata, who would you have chosen? Because I think between none and right. Salt, I wouldn't have picked Salt. But if it's the entire open bracket entrance, I'd pick Wizrobe. I'm sorry, I would. Well, Wiz I'm Wiz curious for your opinion. I mean, Wizzy is one of the invited players, so Wizzy did also get um, featured there. Um, I think if you're just going purely on results and activity, I would probably give the nod to Salt. But being that this is a charity event that is driven by getting as many eyes on the screen as possible, you know, Nun has the Golden Guardian sponsor. <laughs> Nun has a huge social media following. Uh, Nun's one of the most electrifying players in Melee and uh, has more of a depth of legacy than I believe Salt does. Salt, uh, of course, amazing, amazing player. Um, uh, Reddy is amazing. They're very, very insane on the sticks. Um, they also are building their social media right now. They're getting a lot more, um, a lot more attention on Twitch and a lot more attention on social media by posting a lot of crazy falcon punches and combos and absolutely popping off on the main stage. And yeah, I, I agree with you when it comes down to just results. But I think having none as a featured player is going to garner a little bit more attention specifically because it's a charity event. They're trying to get as many donations. They're trying to make this as big as a as much as a watched event as possible. Um, and and it's, it's a really exciting thing to see. And I really hope that um, none can pop off because we have seen none, you know, get as high as like what is it fourth or third at genesis one year a nun's done amazing amazing things in the past and i would love to see a nun a high high tier nun return to form and i know he just got back on a a custom oem controller built by Cadano, and uh he said he's feeling a lot better now that he's not on a fob and uh, I'm hoping that a lot of the controller Johns are out of the way. Maybe uh, maybe none can pop off here at Offstage this weekend. None, of course, one of those people who will tell you that the, 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 the controller proverbial Pandora's box being opened was net negative, I think. Because just based off the tweets, a lot of shade being thrown in the direction of uh, fob users, Z jumpers, as, as he says. So... There, there. You could, you could, you could make the argument uh, about controller John's. I mean, but the thing is, is that nowadays the demand for precision and your controller to not break on you. I mean, I, the classic example moving forward is going to be, unfortunately, JMoox controller at Fate Three by the Sea was so ready to win that tournament. Oh, even recounting it makes me so mad and it was going to be brilliant and it was Zane coming out of losers and it was going to be the best grand finals ever just like Collision was and even though Collision's not the best grand finals ever but Collision's still probably my favorite grand finals from this year anyway the point is that we're going to we're going to need controllers as best they can the poor the, the poor modding community always thrown under the bus as soon as one blows up it's just that we've gotten to the point in terms of the melee meta, if you will, where having a good controller is something that is required at the top level in the same way that you need to have a lot of other things in place as, as an entire picture. But a good controller is on the list. Anyway, going back to all season two, like you said, charity event, what I would like to see come out of it is for is for more of those really fun hype moments that we had last year with Mute City. And this time we have Brinstar as a counter pick also, assuming that we hit the 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 uh, the charity goal, which I, the, the, I believe we will. Yeah. So 
looking forward to seeing all of that. I want to see the commentator reverse, you know, put some Black Ops 2 commentators or for any other community, Guitar Hero, three people, if they're out there, I'd love to see them commentate some Melee. And, and for longer than one game, because we got one game last year. And for 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 a, for a donation goal, just for one game, how to, I want a whole set. Or maybe, okay, I'm not trying to take away from the commentator blocks of the people in Melee who are here year round, but... But, but but at the same time, give me at least a set. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I pick Zane as the winner, not because that's the easy choice, but be, but because it is the easy choice. I would also not be surprised to see Cody take this one away. It is a reasonable amount of money, so I wonder how much that helps or doesn't help some of the people who are supposed to at least make top eight, like how much that factors in. But hopefully all the competitors are locked in playing their best melee uh, we always love to see that at the very least so i'm picking zane because i think zane has the edge on cody at the moment and that can change at the drop of a hat if zane runs into jmook i think zane wins there the only interesting being a thing the only interesting possibility being what if zane runs into amsa now i think amsa wants his last living in the North America tournament arc that we've had for the past 12 months. It's been a great arc. We've seen big tournaments like Big House 10 and the the, the Ludd Invitational, which I believe he I believe he won that. Yes, yes, yes. And I would love to see Jamu kind of, sorry, Amsa wrap that up with a nice pretty first place bow. I just don't see Amsa getting past Cody in particular. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's one Fox that he would have to watch out for. It's not like there's three of them in the bracket. Moki's not here. Leffen's not here. But I just, I don't know if Amsa will get to the point where he goes up against Zane because I think Amsa is the most likely player to take a set over Zane and on the winner's side of things. But we don't have the bracket. We don't know if they're supposed to run into each other or not. So it'll be interesting. But... I know what you're going to say about Mango. I'm calling a Mango not winning the tournament. Hey, uh, <laughs> you, if there, it gets to the point where there's a bulk of stats on the wonky stages, there are very few active players who actually still used to play on those stages. I think Mango might be the only one left still in competing. I think Hungrybox as well. So Mango and yes. Hungrybox are the only two players who were actively competing who are at this event uh, when those stages were legal. I don't know how much that's going to help out, if at a, if at all, if at anything, um, but it would be really cool. But I do want to give credit to Omsa. Omsa did win off season one, and I think Omsa running it back, maybe getting the repeat would be super sick. And, um, you know, Omsa has been actually been practicing on the on the non-legal stages this past like couple weeks uh, <laughs> those sweater clothes are crazy yeah he's been playing on coronary he's been playing on mute city he's been playing on Prince star he's been playing on all the all the potential stages so he's actually prepping for it whether or not that was just stream content or not i just i do want to give credit to um so for at least doing a little bit of prep and maybe that'll be the difference maker maybe that'll make him get deep enough in the racket to be a little upset proof to make it to zane <clears throat> Pardon me, I have not been sleeping well. I've been exhausted. But um yeah, I think uh I think you're right. I think Omsa does have that a little bit more of an edge against Zane. I think Omsa and J Mook specifically have a little bit of an edge on Zane, though I don't think we're a lot of people are expecting. And of course Cody also has that um potential to take Zane the distance. I think that bunch of players, the Zane, the Cody, um J Mook and Amsa kind of have this weird I beat you, you beat me, you beat you, I beat whatever, where they kind of just go in a circle with each other. Whereas um, I think the uh, the rest of the field is kind of a toss up. I can definitely see Johnny beating one of those players. Johnny's beaten Zane before. I can see none beating one of those players. None has beaten players like Hungrybox in the past. And of course, there is the Mango factor where Mango can just decide on that day if he wants to be a champion and um, i think that's uh something that is really interesting um and i think that's about it for off season and something that i get something i really want to talk about is uh, i actually just pull it up on screen is the proposed um official unofficial hall of fame uh tier lists or 
compilation of players. Of course, this um, organized by Cody and Toaf. Oh, what the heck is that? Um, one moment, please. Um, and I do want to give a shout out to Cody and Toaf for putting this together. Very, very cool of them. My mouse is messing up. Hello. What? What? Can, all right. I need to fix this thing. This is really obnoxious. Okay. Um, Pre-MLG, which is actually on the other side of the screen, but I can't move my overlay right now because my computer's being a jerk. Um, 2001 to 2003. That is going to be Azin, Captain Jack, Chillin' Dude, Chudat, uh, Deadly Alliance's own Wes, Isaiah, Ken, Reciferous, and Sastifer. Now, I believe the criteria for this event or for not for this event but for this list is a top five player in the in that era or to have made incredible contributions to the melee community and those are highlighted in yellow so for 2001 to 2003 they also has husband kish cubed kish prime and kish squared the kish brothers matt dz and wife what do you think about that pre-mlg list jesse I think almost everyone that you could think of is is here. I know that there are other players, other contributors, but in terms of the history of the pre-MLG era, that is where we have the least amount of data because even when we get into the MLG era, the, there are names that I could potentially think of that don't make the list, but for 2001 through 2003, when the game first came out and we were just starting to find our identity here i mean it's really important to remember people like kish prime and the rest of the kish brothers because melee fc made melee more of a tournament environment and matt dz hosting the tournament go series brought a lot of players together including out of the north america players like captain jack to play against north americans in particular u.s players husband and wife of course who were not necessarily ever known to be top players or capable of winning tournaments at every tournament they attended uh, were amazing were an amazing dubs team as well as isaiah and ken of course who are automatically going to be hall of fame obviously but for just for for their contributions in terms of commentary to fostering the community of mdva which has since become one of the best regions all throughout melee's history producing amazing players so it starts with all these people and I don't, I, I, I'm glad that I at least recognize every single one of these names and where they might be from or what they may have done at those times for the documentary to chronicle people like Isaiah, Ken, as in Captain Jack, Chillin' Dude, Chudat, Wes, it, it's great. They even give occasional shout outs to people like Reciferous and Sastifer, but I wish that we had more. So if we move on to the MLG era, who are some names here that you think are, uh, well, no, non-deserving is the wrong word. Maybe, how about, let me put it to you this way. How many people should you put into the Melee Hall of Fame at a time? Because with the NFL, I know that they only put in a certain amount per year. They won't just say, hey, we got a whole log jam of people that got to go into the Hall of Fame. Let's induct 20 people at once. No, they'll only do eight or nine at a time. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious for you, who's a first ballot Hall of Famer out of the MLG era, Hada? Out of the MLG era? Oh, God. I mean, you got to put... Korean DJ. Korean DJ <laughs> and PC Chris, I think, are easy locks for the MLG era. I think the fact that well, I'm also a little biased because their set at the MLG finals, championship finals, was what got in me Las into Vegas, yeah. It was what got me into Melee. I watched it on TV with uh, with my uncle. Um, and that's really what sparked my interest in Melee. Um I also want to give a huge shout out to uh, JB3X3 and MLG Bach. Uh, those are the guys who actually did a lot of the back end work and a lot of the management for um, Melee being on the MLG circuit. So um, I know JB3X3 was actually one of the big uh, interview contributors for the original documentary uh, during the MLG era. So um, you'll see him doing a lot of uh, commentary and in his interview being an integral portion of that era. Um, but yeah, KDJ and PC Chris, easy lock for, um, you know, first Brown, first ballot Hall of Fame. 
Um, I'm a big Court fan. Court was one of the first dominant Peach mains, um, except for Sassifer, I guess. Sassifer was also a Peach player. Uh, but Court was kind of what defined what Peach could be. I think Sassifer, you know, was still uh, definitely a solid player, but uh, kind of got um, abused by players who knew Peach's limitations at the time. But Court was one of the first people to actually start thinking, well, what can Peach actually do? Um, but of course, you know, myself being a Peach player, I'm a little biased in that way. But I think KDJ, PC Chris, um, showing not only a dominance with one character, but with multiple. Uh, KDJ, of course, with the Sheik, famously, but also with the Fox. PC Chris with the Falco, the Fox, and even the Peach. Peach C Chris was a was a dominant force, not only in singles, but in the doubles bracket as well. So PC Chris, a multi-character um, and multi-generational talent. And of course, you can't look past Mewtwo King, who spanned multiple, multiple, multiple eras and pushed as one of the five, the earliest of the five gods to start their career. Um, past the Dark Age, into the era of the Five Gods, and even into the Platinum era, some would say. Uh, but music can kind of bow it out during that era. But um, definitely, uh, if you're not going to give it to Mewtwo King during the MLG era, I think you'd probably give it to Mewtwo King during the Dark Ages, because uh, the, that level of dominance during 08 to 2011 was unbelievable. It is interesting. Do you give it to Mewtwo King during the rise phase? Because he really didn't start winning a lot of tournaments until towards 2006, 2007. Like during the during like the MLG proper era, like 2005 and 2006 was was not necessarily the oh could take a tournament. Would be in a lot of top eights, but then would be losing to other players. Uh, I mean, Mewtwo. One of Mewtwo King's first claims to fame, other than the 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 big old melee uh, bible with frame data and everything was also just having a knack for taking sets convincingly off of ken i mean started to become a real thorn in ken's side so it's just interesting where 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 some of these players start from how they put their name into melee history if you will and for a while mewtwo king was just kind of like the grinder and then all of a sudden got good so i don't know when for sure like, because I want to acknowledge that 2007, 2008, and that just kind of splits it in half for Mewtwo King's run of winning just about every tournament. But then when you get to the when you get to the Dark Ages, it's really tough because there's a lot of names that you're going to start to see coming out who were capable of winning events. I would definitely leave PPMD off of a first battle Hall of Fame during the Dark Ages because. I mean, some of his most famous wins come later on in the Five Gods era, but do you, 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 you would be, you would be putting through, let's say, five people, and you have to pick one or two out of the contributors. So it really starts to narrow it down when you think about, okay, well, we obviously have to put in Armada and Mango. Mm -hmm. Got to put in. And that's the that's the challenging part because Juggle Guy and Bobak and Sheridan run the famous most famous tournaments that we still all attend and watch today so those three are really responsible for putting it together so you, that means you have to leave people like hungry box out of it if you're doing a an arbitrary only five at a time for first ballot type stuff that's i think that's what i'm most like stimulated by when i'm looking at a list like this because i love seeing all these names but then i go yeah but who would be first ballot yeah. and if it were only five at a time for the first ballot and the second ballot, if we're only five at a time, or you can make it eight at a time, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you want to do. We're going off a list that Toph and Cody made anyway. These are, I mean, it's so cool. I mean, you, I guess the only other person who I would say needs to be put in this Dark Ages era would possibly be, and I'm looking for where um, Matt.Zeb ended up being placed. Where? Okay, in the Five Gods era. And that makes sense because Matt.Zeb helped get Shine going in either 2015 or 2016. But Matt.Zeb has been around for longer than that and helped keep things going even through the Dark Ages. All right. What, what, what do you got for Dark Ages in uh, Five Gods era? Um, Maybe we could put it that way. I... You know, the Dark Ages were probably the most instrumental for the success, the longevity of the, the success and longevity of Melee's competitive scene. I think if if any of these people were to be have left out or decided not to come back to Melee, decided it wasn't 
<laughs> worth their time. It would have been a huge butterfly effect moving into the rest of Melee's history. And that's just about everyone on this list. You know, Armada, Hungrybox, Mango, PPMD, no introduction there. They're four of the five members of the five gods, and that's only because Mewtwo King was a little bit earlier than them. And then even looking at the contributors, you have Bobak, like you said, Bobak, Juggle Guy, and Sheridan running the three biggest tournaments, two of the three biggest tournaments of the year, and two probably the two most important tournaments um, to really stake your name as a competitive melee player, even to this day. But I think uh, someone who probably does not get enough credit is Prague. I think Prague, not only for commentary, but also for community building, for being an advocate, for being an ally, as well as for just a lifetime of dedication and a lifetime of uh, service to the Melee community, I believe is one of the very few people who have gotten a Lifetime Achievement Award from the greater Melee community is Prague. Um, I think Prague's impact on the Melee community, especially during the Evo, um, the Evo Drive, um, charity drive, was instrumental for the success of that as well as everything going in and out of the documentary as a contributor, as well as a community head. Um, I think if you leave Prague off the list of Hall of Fame inductees, I think that would be a huge disservice to everything that Prague has done for our community. Has done so much. And it's really it's really hard to go back and listen to commentary because a lot of times he's with a redacted commentator. Mm -hmm. But some of the best commentary uh, in, in those times came from from Prague, who also had the wherewithal not only to somehow bring the hype, but also to bring the, you could say, like, mindfulness, kindness. I mean, like like a lot of other internet circles, really brash West, uh, oh, sorry, Western, the, the Wild West type thing. And when we wanted to be better, it was because it was people like Prague pushing that and saying we need to be better and scar as well but those are two great names for everyone to kind of rally behind it's not just i don't know i don't want to say a pleb coming out of nowhere and saying hey we need to be better i mean the community changed for the better because people at the top not only were there for their own talents but also to say we can we can make this place better and safer an incredible thing it, it just isn't it doesn't happen everywhere. We're really lucky that people like Prague were there at that time mm -hmm. as we moved into the Five Gods era. I love seeing just like, again, there are people who are not as involved as they would have been today or not as involved as they are today. Like Silent Wolf is retired and Android for better for better purposes of this discussion is retired and pew pew obviously retired from singles only came back for one or two times just to you know school on the school on the the slippy kids but you then you have the contributors who are all amazing the only name that i don't recognize here actually is a typo do you know who typo is typo Hata? is uh he made he's a controller modder he does a lot of back end um like modding and does um helped out with the early stages i believe of the 20xx hack pack with achilles um but that came out during the platinum era but typo was part of that he also was a big controller contributor kind of with the optimization of things like notches and snapback capacitors he's also um i believe the most dominant home run contest speedrunner um so he does a lot of the optimal home run contest strategies where you go for max distance and yeah, typo's a, it's a, it's HRC Wait. typo on Twitter. He's an absolute. Whoa, whoa, that typo? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's the same person? Yeah, he's a beast. Absolute beast. I asked typo onto the podcast and got, was met with rejection. And I said, it's all good. It's all good. And yet this, this entire time, this person in the hall of fame, holy crap. Okay. Yep. Hey, look, this is, this is amazing. I just did not make that connection in my brain that those <laughs> that was one and the same person yes yes because yeah nowadays nowadays most people recognize typo's name based off a home run contest i mean royalty mm -hmm. absolutely beast mm -hmm. at home run contest both like the uh, tas and non-tas is crazy oh my gosh that's awesome <laughs> yeah 
And I think and this, when is a, you... this is a cool year specifically for, I guess, subsets of the Melee community. And um, whether that be as, as big of a subset as Doubles is, and that's the reason why Android and is specifically on this list, as I was listening to this stream while they were making it, is Android's here for Doubles. And Android was, and I still is, and I still believe to be the most, one of the most dominant Doubles players of all time. Uh, he and Armada were absolutely lights out when it comes to teams and of course you can't even you look just a little bit down the list you have pew pew and sfat pew fat being the other dominant team in that era and then leffen and i think house five were also that grand finals was amazing mm -hmm. and uh i do want to give a lot of credit to android android i think you know we have this conversation in colorado a lot where there's we have certain players myself included who in contrast to their single skill, are very good at teams. And I think Android might be, you know, Android, of course, was an amazing, amazing, amazing singles player. And that cannot be denied, you know, multi-time top 100 player, but was up there competing with the likes of, you know, Armada, Left and Ice, all these top 30, top four, top five, top two quality players on a consistent basis and was never looking like the weakest player on the screen ever. And I think that's an amazing feat for Android. Um, looking at some of the contributors, of course, I, I'm going to look over Crimson Blur for now. Just kidding. Just kidding. Blur has done a lot for the community. But, of course, he's the, the proverbial heel of the community. Kadano for controllers and um, optimization of controller technology. Samox. Nothing needs to be said about Samox. He was the creator of the initial documentary, which was arguably the biggest buff to new players coming into the scene was the documentary and then uh pro even i guess the only comparable uh buff to new players coming out is probably slippy but we'll talk about that in a little bit but of course, of course. the documentary was instrumental to making melee what it is today so Easy round one Hall of Fame uh, ballot is Samox. I would also say uh, Fat and Pupu and Leffen uh, for their contributions not only to singles but to doubles. Um, and then I'd probably give the nod to Toph and Tafo. I think Tafo has done, again, Tafo, again, kind of another heel of the community, but he and the Blurs podcast, um, uh, commentators curse even back in the day even the melee and ami podcast was one of the first pieces of content that was regularly go out they were also uh tafo was actually one of the first keepers of the keys when it comes to maintaining rankings lists and i believe tapo was the biggest contributor and the biggest static keeper prior to the 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 conglomeration of things like melee stats i think tafo was the big figurehead of maintaining tournament results and maintaining spreadsheets and heads to heads and actually giving us documentation to see how these players did back in the day. And uh, so Tafo has done a lot more than I think people realize. Absolutely. When I go forward to the platinum era, we're starting to get to the point now. I mean, every, a lot of people the, uh, okay here's the here's the thing that i'll say I, I love that aiden is here aiden absolutely deserves to be on here as an east coaster i don't know a lot about events like don't park on the grass but aiden not only made sure to run events well but also to get a lot of out of north america talent people from all over the world to events and there was a thread that aiden put out i think yesterday like sometimes yesterday or the day before of saying Oh, yeah, that one of the first out of, like, sorry, one of the first events in all North America for Triff was at a Don't Park on the Grass event, like, it, like things like that. And it, it, Aiden's responsible for trying to get a lot of melee players who are talented in, I don't want to say isolated regions to imply that Europe is, like, trash or anything. I'm just saying that we know that the best players for Melee has always been, or traditionally been, in North America. So when you come to an event here, you're getting to play against the best of the best, and we love seeing matchups like that. I love that Aiden's on here. I also love that you got people... <laughs> You got you got people like uh, Hotbit and LD who are responsible for making well beyond the summit. 
technically first one was in 2015, but obviously took off during this time. Mm -hmm. Summit became that third big event that I think you were alluding to earlier when we were talking about the big three, Genesis, Big House, and in my mind, the big third one was Beyond the Summit. You could correct me if I got that wrong for your vantage point, Hada, but this is announced. Obviously, these are great contributors, and then nothing really needs to be said about players like Zane and Cody and Amsa and Wizrobe and Nunn. They're obviously amazing players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's definitely what I was alluding to, is uh, the Invitational era, and that's definitely what part, was a huge part of the Platinum era. The, uh, the Battle of the Five Gods was also a big Invitational event, and I think what, what was really exciting about events like every summit and, and big Invitationals is uh, like, of course, you take the factor of maybe your favorite top player gets upset in pools or in the early stages of bracket, but you get to immediately jump into sets on sets on sets of high quality, high octane, super dominant players competing head to head. And, and I think that's something that was so cool to not only get a look behind the curtain to see what the preparation of these players looked like going into a Summit Sunday... But it also uh, gave a lot of um, a lot of community members an avenue and an outlet to give back to the community. People like Shannondorf, people like um, like Slime and Aiden and Envy and all these players and, and all these contributors came through the uh, Smash Summit team and the Smash Summit studio. Uh, Mikey, the cheat, was also a member of the Summit staff. So all of these players and all of these community figures have all got their start through BTS and then have used that as a platform and a springboard to push into bigger and better things. Um, you know, Ludwig doesn't even need to be, you know, th there's no introduction needed there. Uh, so... BTS had one of the biggest, I think, across the board influences in what um, helped propel Melee into the modern era. But I also want to give a huge uh, nod to the people who gave us the tools that we need to become better at Melee. So that's people like Uncle Punch, people like Tao Kahn, uh, Dan Salvato, Achilles. And then even before that, we didn't get to talk about it too much, but Kira. Kira was the main contributor for um ssbm tutorials which a lot of people learn to play melee watching ssbm tutorial videos and the people still go back to those videos to this day but people who have made the training packs the 20xx um uh you know people who can do training packs save states um what's it called the um like the overlays the flashing lights the this the that you've been you were one frame late two frame late one frame early two frame early and that's insane for the optimization of today's melee melee's um statistics and i remember coming up during the like the five gods era when i was playing in like 2015 2013 and all these new technological things started to become available all these hack packs the training packs so this the that the same states and i would tease all these young players for like grinding out these situations over and over again i'm like you're such a nerd like when are you gonna do this ledge dash turnaround up tilt no one's gonna do that now every fox at your local that goes 2-2 two -two is ledge dash turnaround up tilting and it just feels so bad because they're invincible and now they're launching you and killing you for no reason but that's all because they practiced it in tools developed by people like achilles um and uncle punch also anther for creation of anther's ladder was also very very instrumental for the people who weren't just grinding out save states and and then hanging out in their training pack they were probably online grinding anthers you know playing on the online ladder and uh players like cody admittedly said that he started on anthers ladder and that was his first avenue into getting a um a taste of online competition and that was really propelled him into the motivation to continue to push into um, becoming a top player. You could put Fizzy into the Hall of Fame just based on Project Slippy making Melee more easily streamable and also in crispier quality because we all know that there are Melee sets that when we go back and watch, we 
kind of cringe at a little bit because it's hard to watch. And even tournaments that did not use Project Slippy or like like actual technology to do tournaments in the modern era, where people at home are complaining, "What's with the stream quality? This is this is yucky looking." Because Fizzy did amazing work on Project Slippy with having it be more easily streamable in crispy HD, and also with having sets saved you could already put fizzy in the hall of fame but the reason why fizzy would be in my mind a first ballot hall of famer regardless of the era that you're talking about throwing fizzy against the rest of this list being a first ballot in my mind is because of the rollback system how easy it is to use and then when of course ranked was introduced into it but you 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 have everything there and it's not purely solely on him for making rollback happen, but it's 98% on him. I mean, he's obviously had some contributors. Mm -hmm. People volunteer their time as well. But this this whole this whole rollback thing is because of six months of work from late 2019 into early 2020 coming out at the literal right time, causing an entire industry, the entire gaming industry, to go, well, why don't our games have rollback? And then people. Or sorry, like the A tier, the S tier developers who are putting out their new games saying, we got rollback. And they're thinking in the backs of their minds, we wouldn't have had to do this if it wasn't for this random dude putting it into Melee, a game made in 2001. It's obviously don't put Jugged Fox over Fizzy is all I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. I know that it's not actually based on that. It's based on alphabetical order by the looks of it. <laughs> but I still say, don't you dare put Jugged Fox over Fizzy or anybody else, not even Ludwig, who I obviously appreciate for all the contributions Ludwig has put in for, for, for filling the void of the Beyond the Summit shutting down and saying, hey, well, why don't we just do whoop, put this uh ludwig ogren championship series and now it's the um it's the uh, uh i keep wanting to say the off season what's the name of the company what's the name of it called off um off brand gosh thank you see that that's that's kind of understandable why i forgot that because i have off season stuck in my head mm -hmm. kind of and uh i'm also kind of it's also kind of funny right People like Aklo and Laud and Triff have been playing Melee for a really long time in terms of who's next up. And it's just funny. Uh, Laud has only recently been able to get results where you could say yeah. Hall of Fame worthy. But Laud's been playing, I mean, ever since at least the Dark Age. Might have even started playing at the end of the MLG era, just not putting in actual results. But there, the, the lesson there is there are people like Ginger who started a really long time ago they were not good enough to be top eight worthy for majors until much, much later on. Even 10 years, as late as 10 years later of on and off competing in Melee. For those of you who are new to the game, who might be three years new because you started in 2020, like a lot of the Slippy Kids did, why am I not top eighting at majors? It takes a long time. And not everybody's as talented as a Mango or Armada, where a lot of it is you just you just get this game and then grind it out. Yeah. Sometimes you have to grind it out to make up for the rest of it. But that's my encouragement to the to the to the scrubs of the world. What do you got, Hada, for the Slippy era and the next up? Yeah, the discussion. Slippy era is is really interesting. Um, I want to give a lot of credit to Drug Fox. Drug Fox. Not only has contributed as a top player, but kind of made coaching and studying and seeing the game academically as as like a cool and necessary thing. Um, all these players, the Drug Fox students, and I believe I have one in chat as well. I don't, I'm pretty sure Zealot has gotten a couple Drug Fox lessons. Um, but we also have players like Spark, players like Ginger, who you just mentioned, who have gotten lots and lots and lots of Drug Fox coaching and lessons, and they have used that to propel themselves to be um, prolific top 20, top 30 quality players. Um, and, of course, there is the the quote-unquote drugged fox curse where you will get ninth for the rest of your career but you will be the smartest coolest ninth place finisher for the rest of your career but um th i that <laughs> i don't want to continue to push that narrative i think that's a little silly but uh, i think uh, of course you know these students and these uh the the dojo of drugged fox is very very strong and very deep and i'm excited to see exactly what more drugged fox has in the kitchen to cook up for us 
Uh, PTAS, of course, Practical Task, one of the biggest back-end contributors to um, Melee from, again, an analytical standpoint, being able to have the has the capability to if you just ask a uh, practical task a, a practical question about melee on twitter and it has enough uh correspondence with modern melee questions and what's going on in the community he'll give you a task recreation probably an hour and he'll have an explanation for you which is great um the can't travel and the next up i think uh aklo kador and lodge Shrif. I think Triff has been instrumental, I think, out of this list. I think he separates himself due to not only what he brings to Europe as a consistent top-level competitor, but also, like, a motivator. I think Triff is one of the very few European players who's willing to really, really grind it out and really push to try to hit that next level. Of course, I think a lot of Europe kind of trains, not necessarily in secret, but I don't think get a lot of the stream time and a lot of the social media time that Triff does. And of course, the only outlier being Leffen in that category, but Leffen, you know, uh, amazing, amazing player for a very long time, top community figurehead. And I think Triff has the potential to separate himself from the rest of this list. And I'm really interested to see if Triff can make another fringe top 10 list going into the next couple of years. So I think if Triff does get ranked top 10 in the next couple of years, he definitely will separate himself. Thunders is a really interesting player. Actually is a, is a resident in Cincinnati right now. I believe spent this last year living in Cincinnati for work. Um, and I've heard he's a very, very cool guy. But the inventor of the Thunders combo, one of the more um, non-conventional foxes to come out from Japan and kind of... Um, opened up a lot of people's eyes to what Fox's potential could start to look like. And uh, definitely is a long-standing, very, very cool player. And I think the last person, I guess the, the two players I want to um, highlight, the, we'll get the other Japanese players, Bomb Soldier. I think Bomb Soldier's reign of dominance was way too short. Uh, and that's mostly because they were a very, very young player from Japan during an era where travel wasn't super accessible. Um, so in my mind, if if Bomb Soldier were to live in the United States during the time when Bomb Soldier really was a dominant player and was, you know, even in their first set and the first couple of times they played was taking Ken to the limit and pushing Ken to play at his best in order to consistently beat him. Um, I could only imagine that Bomb Soldier could have been a top five, easily top ten level player during the pre-MLG and maybe even into the MLG era, uh, but it just wasn't accessible to them. And the final player that I really want to ho highlight and one of my favorite players of all time is Javi. Javi, with the most unconventional grip, was actually the uh, the joypad style grip where he would hold it like this and he would uh, pinch grip and then he would tap with his fingers, <laughs> which is really interesting. So... Um, we actually have a player like that um, by the tag of Raphael here in Colorado who plays with the similar grip. Um, Javi, if you were to talk to players back during the era where Javi was really competing, Javi was a hidden boss top 10 quality player. Um, just didn't have the opportunities, didn't have the means to travel to too many events during his era. And But when Javi did, his results were insane. Javi was consistently getting top eights, ninth, 13th. I don't think I ever saw Javi really get upset all that much and was so fast, so aggressive and really pushed what it meant to be, to be a, I guess, smothering a dance on your shield, make you feel awful style Fox and could have been really, really, really could have been a top five quality player if they had the means to travel as much as I'm sure they would have liked to. Um, and I think what it really boils down to, of course, this is all uh, conjecture and, you know, we can't say for sure exactly what could have been. But I think especially during the era of Dark Ages into the era of the Five Gods is when online and and solo practice could only solo practice could only take you so far and really just traveling to events and getting that experience propelled people into that next level to that next stage that's where the summit buff really became a thing in early 2015 where you had a whole long weekend where all you did was play against the other top players and you really got better over the course of a weekend 
um, I think Javi, with the potential to travel more and more exposure to the other top competitors, could have been one of the greatest players of all time. I fully believe that. And I, the, mm. the only player that I think really got snubbed for this list, and Zealot probably agrees, where the hell is Dreffin? Where is Dreffin on this list? Dreffin, uh. Dreffin has been a top-level competitor, top 50-level player from about 2003 to now. Where is Dreffin? Cobol, too. I think Cobol's also should have been fringe on this list. I think Cobol was an amazing, amazing player. Thank you, Lucas. Um, uh, but Dreffin got super snubbed uh, for the next up. I think melee stats that she and turned down for Walt are all huge potential for this list. But I think that about wraps it up. Dreffin got snubbed. This is a great list, but Dreffin got snubbed. <laughs> <laughs> It is a great list. And before we go, because I need to wrap this up, we need to wrap up here for time, is I want to shout out Kings of Halley 6. That is an event happening in Nova Scotia in Halifax this weekend, as well as the off season two, which we gave lots of love to earlier. But I would have loved to go to this event. Nova Scotia, as an entire region, is a friend of the program. We got people like Frog and Petra and Legs and... Lil Mitz, and let me not forget Rose, who also were all on the podcast. So, and I might even miss one more person. Oh no, oh no. So, we, we got Inky, Inky as the, huh? Have you had Inky on the podcast yet? No, I've not had Inky on the podcast yet. But we, we have Inky as the number one seed to win here. But I think Inky and Rick have traded sets. So, that's the second seed. It'd also be cool to see Frog win this event because Frog has been behind the scenes along with Petra and other people working to make this event happen, make it as big as it can be. Mm -hmm. It's a big event for the entire, all the brackets that they have going. They ha It's not just Melee and Ultimate. There's also Tekken 7 is here, Guilty Gear is here. For all of the events that they have at Kings of Halley 6, 369 people are attending. That's not bad for a regional. I'd love to see it continue to grow. I'm so, so not happy that I'm missing this and the off season too. But if I went to one, I would even hate that more because that meant that I was deliberately choosing one over the other. Mm -hmm. So the last thought that I will add in here for off season two, that I should have gone on to Hitch a Ride's Twitter slash X account because the invited players just basically means that there's an eight person all star crew battle. And so we get to see none in crew battle format, which is just as awesome as seeing none in singles. So none joins the list of those other, you know, Zane Cody's of the world, mangoes of the world as being in a crew battle just between those eight players. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be so good. That does and good. that's that, that's all I got for today. Please, for everyone at home, make sure you show Hada some love on Twitch at Hey Hada and on Twitter X as well, which I think I'll just call it that from now on or X. Tw no, no, Twitter X is better. And also on I, I i know that you're active on other social media platforms i just don't know which one you want to steer the people to the most so i'll let you it, take it from yeah, here just uh just check out the the twitch and twitter that's probably gonna be the most helpful um <laughs> i am i have sent a folder of of clips for my next combo video to kickflip mm. um so expect some developments in that video hopefully over the weekend might go at live at the beginning of next week but we'll see there's some cool stuff in there not gonna lie it's gonna be a pretty banging video um so hopefully we'll be able to share that around and if you guys enjoy combo videos be sure to give that a look-see but of course please follow the program at bsm pod on twitter slash x or whatever we're calling it um cypher 003 of course as well <laughs> um if you guys, you know, I, I have been thinking about um, if you'd have me, Jesse, I would love to do some interviews um, and maybe get some time, get some more people onto the, the BSM pod platform. But if you guys have some cool community figures and members who you would like to see have a little bit more screen time, I would love to talk to them and learn more about their melee journey as well. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, if you guys have a really cool community figure that needs their story told, I would love to help tell it. Yeah, because there's a lot of people who is your Hall of Fame local community member, be it a top player in the local scene that you have or a contributor. There's people that I know for 717. They're in the Hall of Fame, baby. And, and, and the rest of the entire Melee scene goes, who, what now? And then we're all, you know, 717, we're all popping off of that for those people. 
and Hada knows the same thing for Colorado and for Denver or, or just outside of Denver region. Uh, you get it. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, Hada, I'm absolutely open to that. Please, for all means, engage with the program. Get yourself on here. We'd be happy to have you share your Melee story with all of the rest of us. We'll see y'all next week.